the Top Chef thing is great. I, I, New Orleans is looking good on that. Um, you obviously filmed it a long a, a time ago, but do you sit and watch the episodes when they air with people? Nah, or not how really. is that my, my, delayed? My kids are really into it. Oh, are they? So, I, uh, Eight and 10, right? Is right, it? and they're, they're asking me all the time, like, who's, who's winning? Do you tell them? Like I can't. I can't tell you. You don't even tell your own kids? No, I can't. All right. All right. <laughs> so, the lies start with Santa Claus and just go on from there. <laughs> trust me. Like, Actually, you know, I got involved with Top Chef only because um, of a few reasons. Um, the talent is mm -hmm. really spectacular. And to, to see these young chefs um, and what they bring to the table and where they're at with food is just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I love the production. Uh, it's, it's the real deal, which is why I got involved with it, because there's no pretension at all. What you see is what it is. I mean, they have so much time and so much ingredients, and they have to perform. They have to do it. But Top Chef's a much more real, uh, I mean, as far as a straight-up cooking experience. You feel like these guys, they have to bring it. I got involved um, the very first time Top Chef was had a finale in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and uh, I got involved with... Uh, two of the episodes for that and the finale. And I really didn't get it then. I was just kind of like, you know, okay, well. And then they asked me to, uh, to really sort of come through for them in the Texas season. Uh, and then last year in the Seattle season, I got more involved and I got a little bit more involved in the production of it as well as far as some producing and some writing of the show. Um, and then, and then it, you know, it sort of the light went off and said, wow, this is like amazing stuff. Yeah. Not only is it a great television, but it's am amazing. And you would think as a competition show mm -hmm. that, you know, okay, after, you know, a couple of episodes, it becomes the same old, same old, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not the case. Right. So that's why, I'm, that's why I'm involved with it. Why do you think we're so interested in food as competition uh, these days? It's, uh, you know, when you, um, and we'll, we'll talk about your Food Network days for a while, but it was very much people wanting to cook, food was becoming you know, the cultural currency of our time back in the 90s. And then somehow it became, everything's a competition. A competition. Is that, uh, I can't believe people sit there and be like, oh, that dish looks terrible, oh, that looks good. And they're not tasting it, they're just looking like, oh, gee, I can't even believe they did that to the, and I, I don't understand the, the living sport. room, is that it, is it sport? What it becomes is it? a sport, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, like, I, I'm with you. I, I mean, I don't know why it's become that, but mm -hmm. it's, be, it's become this, uh, you know, food as a competition, uh, like a sport, is all I can say. It's yeah. just like, you know, I mean, you watch basketball, and it's just like you can't taste the basketball. Well, that's right? true, it's yeah. Just, you, you can't know, make you know. the jump shot, but you can right. sure comment on how bad <laughs> right. that was. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. A lot of chefs don't like this, so they feel like it sort of denigrates the food experience a little bit, or the cooking experience when it's all... Um, you know, food should be about community and cooking for people you love and pursuing your craft, and it shouldn't be about can you beat the next guy. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, all right, well, okay, let's just move on then to <laughs> that question. Your empire is so big, and you have uh, a lot of moving parts. Are you still, I mean, are you in contact with every restaurant every day in some way, shape, or form? I sure am. How do you keep that up? I mean, that's... Well, I think that it's... Um... You know, first of all, I'm very blessed to have the people that I have in my organization. And uh, I have people in my organization that have been with me since day one mm -hmm. or pretty much even before then. So pick a restaurant. Uh, NOLA. Safer. NOLA, okay. Well, Avril Thompson has been with me 28 years. Mm -hmm. He's the general manager. And my chef there has been with me for 16 years. Josh, pick another one. Mm, let's say, uh, let's see, how Emerald's many Orlando? Vegas? Okay, Emeralds Orlando, yes. let's say. <laughs> okay. Just tip of my tongue. Gabriel uh, was with me at Commander's Palace, who's the general manager, the director of operations there. So he's been with me about 29 years. Mm -hmm. And Bernard was my pot washer at Commander's Palace, who's really? the director of culinary. No kidding. So. so you're a big believer in raising him up. How was your, Johnson and Wales, uh, yes. that's where you got your culinary training. Mm -hmm. Do you still hire people out of culinary school? I hear a lot of chefs say, I don't want another trust fund baby who went to culinary school, can't cook. I don't want to, you know. You know, when I interview young talent, um, I'm, I'm really looking for, I'm looking for heart, I'm looking for soul, I'm looking for passion. You know, I can teach somebody how to cook, but you've got to have the want mm -hmm. and the love and drive to want to cook. Mm -hmm. um, if you have that, then it's much easier to teach somebody. Can you tell in about five minutes into an interview whether you're going to hire somebody or not? Yes. So you can, what's the main offender for somebody who is, uh, is there something someone can say and definitely not get a job with you? 
Well, you know, I'm not looking for people that um, are, are looking to necessarily build a resume, mm -hmm. although that's, you know, that certainly is a part of it. Um, I, I want somebody that really wants to, to learn and grow in the organization. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm not really, I don't really look for experts. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for people that really want to want to make people happy is the key in the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I can teach somebody how to cook, but wanting to cook and wanting to cook to make someone happy, mm -hmm. that's something that's rare that you can find. Mm -hmm. And when you see that, then that's what I'm attracted to. You probably have to tell the story all the time, but like, so the whole BAM kick it up a notch. How did your I'll tell you how, you, tell you how BAM came about. Um, and are you I always there? kicked it up a notch, mm -hmm. which was just being from New Orleans and my expression about raising the level of spice. So, you know, I would taste something and say, well, we're going to kick it up a notch. And, and it, it just kind of, you know, caught on. BAM came about being a cooking show, having no studio audience, having a floor supervisor, floor manager, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was behind the scenes. Everybody else was in the control room except for the camera people. Mm -hmm. So I had six camera people and a production stage manager um, who was rotor for a long time. And being a food show and shooting eight television shows a day, we'd shoot four or five and then we have all of this food and then we would break and then, of course, everybody wants to eat the food. And so they, the crew would eat the food, and the camera people would eat the food, and they would eat more food, and then all of a sudden we would go back. And then I realized that I'm like alone here. Like, because everybody else is sleeping now. You know, they're holding a camera. And I'm the one that's, I, you, know, you know, I so bam, came about waking everybody up and saying, hey, Let's go. You just hooked me up. Good. I'm in. I'm in. I'm good. I'm good. That's great. See how it works? I die. It's, it's impressive. I remember that. Do you feel um, like you need to experiment a lot with your menu? And, you know, I know before on the stage here, uh, my colleague uh, I, Julia Mosca was talking I, about I quit Mario. using customers as guinea pigs a right. long, long time ago. So, yeah. I, and, you know, we've all had those tasting meals where you feel like it's about the chef's ego and not about me eating, um, you know, and are you, you foaming it up anywhere? Are you doing the, you foraging for, you know? You know, I, um, I was a very young, young chef at Commander's Palace and, and I had probably one of the greatest mentors in the world, Ella Brennan. And uh, when I took over Commander's Palace, I was 26 years old. And I took over after Paul Prudhomme, which was not easy, easy shoes yeah. to fill. And um, about my first year into the job, I was young and hot-headed and very egotistical and just, you know, on a rampage all the time. And We all find that hard to believe. And okay. thought that that's the way that you should, how do you run a kitchen? Uh, is that because you learned it that way? Is that yeah. how, because that's the old yeah, exactly. culinary. And she, she gave me a piece of paper and she came up to me in the middle of service and she gave me a piece of paper and she said, just put that in your pocket and read it later. And so after service, you know, I finally remembered and I got the piece of paper and it said, tomorrow, please leave your ego at home. <laughs> and it stuck. How'd you feel at that moment? Um, a little embarrassed, but it was a great learning moment because I realized right then and there that uh, it, it was not really about me. Mm -hmm. It was about the customer. And so um, from that day on, um, it, it stuck. What's uh, the biggest regret you've had in your career so far, besides this interview? <laughs> I have no regrets at all. And what's um, your, what's your... Uh... I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I have, I have no regrets, actually. I, I'm, I can really say that to you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I wake up in the morning and I say, wow, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. Um, and uh, I love being in the restaurants. I love taking care of people. I love being with my people. Mm -hmm. um, I love making people happy. I like seeing people smile a little bit more when they leave the restaurant than when they entered. Nice. And, uh, and that's a good feeling. Mm -hmm.